In part two of the program, we are taking a look at the Ministry of Justice, uh, which of course is the legal arm of the federal government of Nigeria, primarily concerned with bringing cases before the judiciary that are initiated or resumed by government. The headquarters of the organization, uh, located in Meitama District, Abuja, it's headed by the Attorney General of the Federation, who also serves as Minister of Justice. Now, the Attorney General is appointed by the President and is assisted by a permanent secretary who is a career civil servant. By next book Monday, that's 21st of August, after the swearing in of ministers designate, the new Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice will be Latif Agbebi, all things being equal. To walk us through development in this ministry, I'm joined by our legal practitioner, Cortez Adiba, on the first 100 days. Thank you for joining us on the program. Um, Latif Agbebi had quite an impressive screening session at the Senate where the senior okay, advocate, you know, talked about quite a number of important issues, even bashing the DSS and the EFCC, okay. you know, about not obeying uh, court judgment. What do you make of Latif Agbebi as Attorney General and Minister of Justice? Is it me? Mr. Adiba, exactly, I'm talking to you. Yeah, okay, thank you for having me. Um, I think it's a, Latif Agbebi is a fine pick, but as you know, in a democracy, the Attorney General is supposed to be an independent official of the government. Uh, but it then depends on what level of independence the Attorney General wants to exercise in the government, depending on how willing his appointor is for him to be free and independent from the clutches of government. So, but he's a, he's a very senior lawyer. He's been around for quite some time. So he is, is a great pick. So uh, there are some pertinent issues, you know, top of which is, for instance, of Rashid Bauer, suspended uh, head of Nigeria's anti-corruption agency, the FCC, who's been detained now by the State Security Service for over two months without charges. Um, how do you think the new man in the Helms of Affairs should tackle issues of this nature? Well, you know, if we have a system that is self-reinforcing, a system that works well, it doesn't even need an attorney general to prevent the kind of abuses that Abu Rashid Bawa is going through. Look, let's be serious for, for a moment. We have a democracy, not an authoritarian regime. How do you accuse someone of corruption without any other evidence, and then you lock them up for two months? We all know that, look, this guy had his part with the former governor of Zampara, the man he accused of egregious cases of corruption, the government that is detaining this man nominated that man, and that man is going to be sworn in as a minister on Monday. Now, let's even forget the, 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 the politics of it. What about the constitution of this country that provides for people to be taken to court within 24 hours where you have courts within the radius of 40 miles or so, and when you don't have for 48 hours. Why is it that the government is holding him while, before, while investigating him? Why don't you release him if you're not ready to take him to court now? Obey and guarantee his constitutional rights, depending when you find enough grounds to take him to court. So I think it's the wrong thing to do. And if that doesn't take an attorney general to be on his seat to prevent that, if we are indeed a democracy, see, what people do not understand is that we don't prefer democratic governments to authoritarian governments because of infrastructure. The only reason why we prefer a democratic government to authoritarian regimes or military regimes is because we know that democratic governments respect the rights of, of the individual your right to life, your right to freedom of movement, to free, 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 um, free speech and all that. So once that is not guaranteed anymore, then what then is the difference between democracy and, and, and military regimes? Hopefully, so I think what they're doing is very with bad. an attorney general and a minister of justice, uh, you know, this current administration will have 
uh, some more legal counsel as to how to go about these things. But when Latif Agwemi and Festus Keyamo appeared on that list, people started nursing the idea of a possible separation of the office of the AGF from that of the Minister of Justice. That's not possibly or probably going to happen under this administration. But how important is this? Uh, well, I don't support. I don't support that. I think it's one one person can control that portfolio, right? Because mm. don't forget, we also have Solicitor General of the Federation. We don't need to create more offices all over the world in most parts of the world where we practice the kind of democracy that um, the, where we have the kind of democracy that they have. In the United States, for instance, do you have a Minister of Justice and then and the Attorney General? It's a combined office. So I don't subscribe to, to the idea that we have to separate that office. So let's touch on, you know, something that made the news yesterday. There was an uproar, uh, uproar in the Abia Tribunal Court in Umaya yesterday when the Attorney General, Minister of Justice designate, showed up in court as lead counsel to Alex Oti. Uh, so some are saying that um, his presence and his seating with Oti's lawyers uh, was interpreted by some as um, an attempt to intimidate members of the tribunal. What are your thoughts in this regard? Well, so I think the issue is more of propriety. The state attorney general is not the personal lawyer of the government. He occupies that office on behalf of the people of Abia State. In fact, in a proper democracy, that man can prosecute the governor on behalf of the people if the governor is found to have committed infractions or crime against the people of Abia State. So let's not forget about whether he's there to intimidate them or not intimidate them. If he's appearing for the governor, not on behalf of the state, look, there's a difference between him appearing to prosecute or hold brief or I mean over a matter that affects the state as Abia state. You understand what I'm saying? Uh. It's a different thing if, if it is the governor that is the defendant, not acting on behalf of the state, but defending the verdict of an election that, that he was declared to be the winner, right? So it is not right. The attorney general should be independent, even though he's an appointee. And this is why... I have been conversing for plural executive. As you understand, there are so many states in the United States where even the post of the attorney general is contested for and won in an election. So that way he's not beholden to the governor who appoints him or her. So it is wrong that he showed up in the court as a counsel to the governor and not as the attorney general of the state. Oh, by the way, I, I was referring to Latif Agbemi, who is um, attorney general. Uh, designate uh, who happens to lead the council no, to Alex Alti. No, I, 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 it's not been sworn in, right? Yes. It's not been sworn in, but I, I, I think the, the proper thing for him to do is to have stayed away. He doesn't have to be in the court to even know what is going on. Uh. Although he can go to court, he can go to the court as a friend of the court and as a senior lawyer. But sitting with the, the, defense, with the defense team was wrong. We we'll look forward to a revamp in that um, arm of government. And Nigerians are also keen on a federal government that will truly honor the judiciary and obey judgments of the court. Kati Sadiba, legal practitioner, thank you for talking to us on the program this hour.